What's going on guys? Welcome to your 17th Java Game Applet tutorial. Um, welcome back and in today's tutorial we're going to add some more platforms and you you know kind of optimize the way that we add those platforms because uh, well first just jump into your starting point class and we'll get started. As you can see we have you know two platforms now and if we wanted to create more platforms um, we'd have to do P3 and then set up everything. But again, if you guys watched the last series, uh, you're kind of familiar with arrays, and we're going to use a platform array to generate as many platforms as we want. We're only going to deal with seven because that's more than enough than our game needs. So we're going to set up this platform, make it an array by, again, the, the square brackets there, set this equal to a new platform array. So we're just going to say a new platform, and we're going to pass in... Um, the number of platforms we want to have total. So we're going to have seven. There's never going to be more than seven platforms on our screen at a time. So there we go. We've now set up a platform array and we're just going to go throughout our code and, uh, you know, tweak some things. So we're going to go first to our start method and we're going to set up all seven of our platforms that we have defined. And again, um, we do this with a for loop. So we're just going to say for int i is equal to zero uh, semicolon as long as i is less than our array which is called p dot uh, length and that just returns how many items are within our array so that'll return seven and then we're just going to say um, semicolon and then i plus plus so we're just going to cycle through this for loop seven times and within that for loop we're going to cut out this code here paste it and we're going to add our brackets to our uh, specific platform that we are setting up. And we're going to start with the platform in our platform array at the position 0, and then go position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Seven different platforms, even though um, it's just 0 through 6. So we're going to place our i in here, and we're going to create a new platform, um, and that will define all seven of our platforms for us. Uh, but the thing that we want to do is we want to add another random, uh, we could have done this a different way, but we're just going to do another random object, r equal to new random. So now that we have a random object set up, we're going to define the x and y position of our starting platforms. So for our x position, we're first just going to start our x to be, you know, the width of our applet. So we're just going to say get uh, width. And that refers to, again, our applet size. So we're going to get something like, I think, oh man, I don't even remember how big our applet is. 800, it's right there. So that's going to return 800 for us. And then we're also going to set up our Y position to be a random. So we're going to refer to that R variable we just set up. We're going to say next int. And we're going to pass in a randomness of about 400. So that's pretty good. But if we run it, uh, you'll see it's you know not perfect. The next thing that we want to do is add some spacing because this will generate all seven of our platforms at you know the very the width of our um, applet. So they'll all be created pretty much in the same x uh, same x coordinates. Uh, they might be random you know y values, but they'll all be you know right on top of each other pretty much. So that's going to be a lame game. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add just like a difference of two hundred times i because again we're going to uh, cycle through seven times so this will you know give it a varying degree of uh, space between each platform and now we have our x position set up we also want to set up our y position because right now our platforms will be from the top of our applet down 400 pixels and it'll, you know set up all of our platforms within that space but we want our platforms more towards the bottom so what we're going to do is we're going to say get height Again, this is referring to the height of our applet, and we're going to say, and that's going to return 600, and then we're just going to minus out, you know, a random number between 400. Now, one thing that uh, might happen when we do this, oh, perfect example right here, um, we're going to have a cutoff platform at the bottom because, again, we could have a platform created right at the bottom if this random returns zero. It's going to create a platform right at the bottom. So what we also want to do is we want to add a variable. We're just going to set 40 um, in there because, you know, that's the height of our platform. So anyways, we're just going to add plus 40. No, actually, let's see. Subtract 40 
terrible tutorial. What's wrong with me today? Anyway, so we're going to subtract 40. So now our platforms are going to be generated anywhere from pretty much the bottom up 400 pixels plus the height of our platform. And it's going to create platforms within there. Next thing that we have to do, we just have to exit out of this platform too because you know we've already set up all seven platforms that we want here. So as you can see, we didn't really add that much, uh, that many lines of code, but uh, it will set up seven platforms for us a lot quicker than going P, P2, P3, P4. And then what we're gonna do is go down to our run method of our thread and we're gonna you know, do another for loop here. So we're gonna say for um, int i equal to zero, semicolon i is less than, again, p dot length, um, and then semicolon and i plus plus. Whoops, plus plus. All right, and then, uh, you know, we're just gonna call our update for each one of our platforms within our array again. So we're, instead of saying p dot update, we're gonna say p square bracket i. And that's gonna you know cycle through for each one of our platforms and it's called update method. We're gonna also delete this P2 update because again, this little handy for loop sets up everything for us. And might as well just copy this for loop and go down to the paint method because lastly we have to paint all of our platforms. So we're just gonna you know go in here and instead of update, we're gonna say paint. And instead of this and B, we're just gonna say uh, G within here. So that'll paint all of our platforms and then we're just going to delete uh, these two P paint and uh, P2 paint methods there. And now our game is starting to look pretty sweet. So let's run this and hopefully we don't have any errors and hopefully it looks somewhat, you know, decent at least. Um, so let's run this bad boy and we got something like this. So, um, you know, just the basics of our game and as you notice uh, each platform will be relatively spaced um, about about the same there and then you know we can just jump from platform to platform and then it's gonna create a random uh, variance when it recreates the next time so as you can see uh, it's a good basis for a game and you, you will never see more than seven platforms on the screen at a time because again all of these platforms come from our platform array that we set up um, which only has seven items within the array. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and you're starting to understand the game uh, development aspect of uh, programming a little bit more. Um, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Uh, have a good one. See you later.